Well, good day. Um, I think part of the reason you've clicked on this particular part of the website is because you're interested in pursuing your next steps in your relationship with God. As I begin this uh, particular day's discussion about what it means to have a relationship with Christ, I want to encourage you to make sure you've downloaded already. Uh, right below this, it talks about uh, the, the PDF that goes along with this called Step to Life. I like talking and taking people through Step to Life because it really kind of helps people figure out where they are on this journey of their relationship with God. Uh, most of us realize it's not like one day you're walking down the street and then all of a sudden having never heard the name of Jesus or not being familiar with God, all of a sudden you become a Christian. There's a process that uh, we seem to go through and Step Up to Life helps us understand that process. So let me explain it to you as you take a look at uh, that attachment, that PDF that's also with this video. First, I want us to understand that God's trying to get everyone's attention. He really wants to share with us who he is. And there's a couple things he wants us to know. Number one, he wants us to know he's all wise, W-I-S-E. He has a plan for our life. He created us. He brought us into being. Secondly, he wants us to know he is all holy which means he does have a problem with what we call sin. In fact, sin cannot exist in his presence because he is by nature holy. Well, that's a problem for us. But God has dealt with that in his mercy because the third thing he wants us to know is that he is all merciful. He's provided a way in which we can spend eternity living in relationship with him even though you and I have this problem with sin. Now, in relationship to this particular plan of God, um, each of us can find ourselves, I believe, on one of five steps. And that's really what that chart, that diagram that you downloaded right next to this video explains and outlines for you. Step number one is the step of unconcern. The point is we may know something about God or we may know nothing about God. The basic idea is we just don't care. I've had all kinds of friends who have gone to the same Christian school I went to, attend the same church, who actually have about as much knowledge as I do about the basics of the Christian faith, and they have decided that they just don't care. That's the step of unconcern. What happens in most of our lives is we end up having some sort of traumatic event happen in our lives. We call them foxhole conversions. You know, soldiers were sitting in their foxholes and the bombs and missiles and the bullets are flying overhead and they basically say, God, if you get me out of this, my life belongs to you. What we understand is those foxhole conversions cause a person to kind of move up to the step of concern from the step of unconcern. There also are those times when maybe we attend a, a funeral service. We're looking ahead and we see that box and we know there's a body in there and we know that person used to be living but now they're not living and as people are looking at that box and hearing the pastor speak, they're thinking about heaven, they're thinking about hell, they're thinking about life, they're thinking about death. They move from the step of unconcern to the step of concern. Or maybe they have maybe a close call. We talk about, you know, when you almost get run over by a car, you say, you're, you're my life flashed in front of me. And, and that's what we're talking about. There's something that occurs that moves them up to the step of concern. Now often what happens is, once the pressure is gone, we move right down the ladder, back down to that bottom step of unconcern. But sometimes our interest is peaked, and the Holy Spirit begins to work on us. And we move up to that step of conviction. What's the step of conviction? This is where conviction means spiritual discomfort. This is where God is using things like our conscience, and he's using uh, his word, and it's kind of like a millstone. We're in the middle and we're feeling a grind down upon us. So as we begin to attend maybe a Bible study, begin to read the Bible, maybe begin to attend church or talk to Christian friends, we begin to feel this spiritual discomfort, which is an indication the Holy Spirit is beginning to work on our life. Uh, I got something I want to share with you. I know you've heard people say time and time again, there's only one way to get to heaven. I actually believe there are two ways. Now, before you turn off the video, listen to me. The two ways to get to heaven. The first way is let's take a test, and let's use the Ten Commandments as our test. Let's take a look at each of those commandments. In fact, grab a piece of paper. Write down this number. 
How many times, like you, like I, have you ever disobeyed your mom and dad, or shown them disrespect, or talked back to them? The commandment says, honor thy father and thy mother. Now, that number is a big number for me. You put your number down. Let's take another one. How many times in your life have you ever stolen something? And you're going, oh, okay, that's, that's not so bad. No, how many times have you stolen someone's reputation? Have you taken some loose chains that didn't belong to you? Maybe punched out of work early. Now, that number for me, again, is a big number. You put your number down. How many times in your life have you ever lied? Well, the commandment is, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I'm talking about the little white lies. I'm talking about the misleadings. I'm talking about the direct lies. Again, that number's a big number for me. Put your number down. Well, let's pick an easy one. Thou shalt not kill or murder. You kind of go, wow, that doesn't apply to me. At least I hope it doesn't apply to any of you. But the reality is we have to use Jesus' definition. His definition says if you harbor hatred in your heart towards someone, you've broken that commitment. Now, add up your numbers. Now, if you're like me, those numbers are huge. And we haven't attacked the, talked about the big commandments. You know, the number of times you haven't put God as number one in your life. See, the first way to get to heaven is you have to have an, an absolute zero for a number. It means you've never, ever in thought, word, or deed broken the very law of God, violated his righteousness. Well, the question you ask in the step of conviction is how much do your sins bother you? A little bit? A lot? A whole lot? Or enough to do something about it? Often people on the conviction step, what happens is they begin to feel so uncomfortable, they just move right down the ladder down to the step of unconcern once again. I'm not going to go to church. I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to talk to those Christian friends. I just feel uncomfortable. But sometimes as they begin to allow the Holy Spirit to work in their life, they move up to the, top, the next step, which is the step of repentance. What's repentance? Spiritual U-turn. As they hear God's word, as they're around God's people, as they listen to God's spirit working inside of them, they begin to change their behavior. Repentance is a spiritual U-turn. I feel uncomfortable when I'm walking this direction, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and walk the exact opposite direction. Now, please understand something. Repentance is not conversion. Repentance is not becoming a follower of Christ. Repentance is not where you experience the life of God. Because repentance is nothing about the actions that we take because of our, that discomfort. And often what happens is people walk in the realm of repentance. They get frustrated because they, just like me and just like you, uh, continue to sin. And, and eventually they throw their hands in the air and say, I can't live this life. It's impossible. And they walk right down the bottom of the step to the step of unconcern. Repentance may look like you're a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ, but you haven't actually experienced a relationship with Christ. You see, it's the top step that we're talking about. And that top step is faith in Jesus Christ. Now stop for a second. What do we mean by faith in Christ? This is where someone says, I trust God absolutely and completely to be the leader of my life and to be the forgiver of my sins. There's a great illustration it kind of captures what it means to place your faith and trust in Jesus. It's about the guy who strung his tightrope across the Great Falls. And he gathered the people together and said, I'm going to do something amazing. I'm going to walk across these Great Falls tomorrow. And I'm not going to use a safety line. And I'm not going to use any kind of safety net. Well, you can imagine what happened. The people came out. And sure enough, he said, do you think I can walk across this tightrope to the other side? They said, yes. And he walked all the way across and he walked back. And he said, come back tomorrow.